In this example, we're going to look at a method of calculating the deflection of a beam known as the moment curvature method, or sometimes the double integration method. The starting point here is the concept of curvature, which is a mathematical concept applied to any line in space, and it's essentially a measure of how bent a line is. So we can have a line that's almost straight, and that will have small curvature, or a line that is much more bent, and that will have large curvature. We can apply this idea to a deflected beam, so if we have a beam with some simple loads on it, it will deflect, and if we take the beam as a line member, then the line itself will now be deflected in a form that means it has curvature. It turns out that for small curvatures, we can express mathematically the amount of curvature as the second derivative of the equation of a line. Since beams will generally only have small deflections and therefore small curvatures, we can use this expression for beam curvatures. And it also turns out that we can link the expression for curvature to that of the bending moment within a beam, say m of z, with a constant um, e and i, which are geometric and material constants, as in the expression there. This is useful because this is an expression which, if we can integrate it twice, will give us the deflection of a beam. So to see how this works conceptually, we'll, we'll work through the, the maths, and then we'll apply it to a, an example. So here we've integrated once, and we see that we've now got dy by dz appearing in the equation. Now dy by dz is the gradient of a beam, so this, this in itself might be useful. If we integrate again, then we get an expression with y, and it's y, the deflection of a beam, that we're looking for here. There's two points to notice at this point. One is that we've got two unknowns in our expression, a and b. These are constants of integration, and we'll need to find out what those are. We'll come to that in a moment. The other one is that we've used z as the horizontal beam axis, and y pointing downwards to measure deflections. This is quite common for beam deflections because we want a positive deflections to be downwards because gravity tends to act downwards. Um, some textbooks and some computer programs take the normal x, y axis used for most of the maths. Um, in, in that case, we wouldn't see the negative sign in the moment curvature relationship. So to see how this works for a practical case, we'll look at a beam which has a very simple uh, bending moment distribution, just constant moments at each end, so the bending moment at any point of the beam is going to be constant m here. So we know that, and we can put it into the moment curvature expression, and because m is a constant, this is very easy to integrate. We simply get an equation that we'll call equation 1, and this has got one unknown, a, in it. We then integrate again, still we can integrate very easily, we get an equation we'll call equation 2, with two unknowns, a and b in it. At this point, we need to work out what a and b are, and to do that, we'll introduce what are known as boundary conditions to the problem. We'll do this just to one side. So a boundary condition, physically, is simply a statement of one point along the beam where we either know the deflection or possibly the rotation of the beam. So in this case, because we've got supports at each end of the beam, we can say that at the left-hand end, where z equals naught, the deflection is also equal to naught. So mathematically, we can write that as at z equals naught, y equals naught. Now that's useful because we can put that information into equation 2, and we find that all the terms in equation 2, except for b, are 0, and as a result, b itself must be 0. So we've worked out the first constant of integration. We also know in this problem that the right-hand end of the beam has zero deflection, again, because there's a support there. And so we can write that mathematically as at z equals l, y equals zero. If we put that into equation two again, then we quickly find that a is equal to ml on two. So we've now worked out both a and b, and we can put those into equation two, and after a little bit of rearranging, we get that the deflect and deflection of the beam is given by m on 2ei into l minus z squared. Now, this is, this is what we wanted. Uh, we can also work out the gradient of a beam by putting a into equation 1, and that also comes out as a simple expression. 
So this is the basic approach that we use to find deflections of beams using the moment curvature relationship. Things can get a little more complicated if we have a more complicated bending moment distribution, and sometimes the boundary conditions aren't quite as obvious, but the general principles will apply whatever the problem.